Hey folks, uh, good day to you. VM Explorer here, and thank you for taking some time to watch this video all about uh, my uh, Gen 7 Home Lab and some changes I'm making to it. Uh, if you're a follower of the blog and you go into blog series, you can always scroll down here. Let's get scrolling down <laughs> to the uh, Home Lab Gen 7. It's where I keep all the blogs on different things I'm doing. Uh, the last three that I had posted up, the last three I had posted up here, uh, you could see that we've got uh, the change rationale for some hardware changes, uh, updating that HBA 330, and then some of the steps that I do did with adding that new hardware. Now where I'm at is uh, we've got all that done, right? Uh, we went through all these different steps here to get it up, up and running. Uh, but what we want to look at here is the actual um, adding of a flash cache disk. Okay, so we added in the HBA 330, which has been working great. I haven't had any issues with it. But my approach, long-term approach for this lab into Gen 8 is to move it to all flash, all NVMe. So I added in the 330 to get through vSphere 7, which will probably last me another year or so, somewhere in that range, uh, running spinning disks and a combination of SAS flash disk is how it's currently set up. But if you remember in this particular blog, we added this card into the system, and that was merely to support a boot disk and move away from USB, which is another requirement for uh, vSphere 8. You have to have some sort of persistent storage if you want to boot from USB. That's what's coming in vSphere next. I've decided to move away from USB boot, chose this Kingston 240 uh, uh, gigabyte disk to use as my boot disk, and it's been working great. Now the next step is here is I've got this NVMe slot right here, and what I'm going to do is add a cache disk for vSAN. So right now I have two 200 gig SAS cache drives. I'm going to remove those out of the system, put a 512 gig cache drive in this spot right here, and then continue to use the HBA330 with the spinning disks in a vSAN hybrid configuration until I'm ready to move to vSphere next. And at that time I'll move to all flash. But for now I'm going to take the next step, which is adding this disk in. So this is the disk I chose. Uh, the uh, Sabernet uh, 512 gig rocket. <laughs> when I looked it up, it had some pretty good specs. It seemed to align uh, to what I needed to do. It's consumer grade, right? It's cheap. I think it was $100 or $69 on a Black Friday sale. So that's the other reason why it kind of pushed me a little bit to get some of this done is I can get some relatively inexpensive uh, hardware in here. This one seemed to have a good uh, TBW rating, which is the terabyte written rating. Uh, I think it was in the neighborhood of around uh, 800 which was uh, pretty high compared to other ones. It's not PCI 4.0, which I really don't, for a, a system like mine, it, it really doesn't matter. Right? If you're doing some high-end gaming and want some really big throughput, then PCI 4.0 and you want to be on latest and greatest, go ahead. Usually servers like this and, and virtualization are usually a step behind, somewhere in that range. But anyways, this is the device I chose. We're going to get it installed and up and running. The first thing I do is I put uh, ESXi 103 into maintenance mode. I had to do ensure accessibility mode because that's the only mode it would accept. And the reason for that is because you need four hosts essentially to do a full data evacuation. Ultimately, that's what I would have preferred to do was full data evacuation, but I can't because I don't have enough surviving hosts to support the, the storage policy. If you want to learn more about storage policies, click on the vSAN data store, right click on it and go to policies, and you can start to understand your policies a little bit better. But for mine, it's in maintenance mode, and if we look at the storage adapter, there's that Dell HBA330. You can see we have four disks. We have the about 200 gig um, SAS SSD drive. Now these drives are getting a little bit older and they're starting to give me some trouble. That's the other thing that's kind of pushing in here. They're pushing probably 10 years old and it's about time for them to go. <laughs> it's time to sunset them and move on, right? So I've got two of those. Now each disk, so we got 200 gig disk is connected to a two terabyte spinning disk and that's basically gives me two disk groups. Now there are advantages to having two disk groups per host. As an example, if one of the flash cache drives, you only lose the disks that are attached to it. So if I attached all my spinning disks to one cache disk for vSAN, if that cache disk goes, all those disks goes offline, the storage capacity drops because they've gone offline. So it's been a pretty good, it's worked out well, and maybe as I move into flash, I might split it back out. But for now, all I'm going to do is remove these two flash disks and put these two spinning disks and the new 512 gig NVMe disk into one disk group to move forward. So the first step, get it into maintenance mode. 
Once it's in maintenance mode, the next step is remove it from the cluster. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it out here and there's a reason for that. That will enable it after I shut it down and remove the disks, the flash disks and add in the NVMe, power it back on, validate everything is here. It makes it easier to reintroduce that back into vSAN and then allow it to do its replication steps. Okay, so let's just check it real quick here. It's out, it's in maintenance mode, so it's no longer part of the cluster. And of course, just to show you the impact of losing a host, you could always go into the cluster, go into monitor, and if you scroll down here to uh, capacity, right, you should see your capacity change, right? Mine's usually about 11, right now it's showing seven, and that's because that host is no longer there. You could actually go into capacity history and you could see where it actually dropped. So before it was about almost 11. There's when the host, uh, I put it into maintenance mode a little bit ago, and you can see it actually dropped off. So capacity charts are really handy. All right, let's get this host shut down. So I'm gonna right click on it, go to power, and I'm gonna act, execute shutdown, and we'll just put in your add NVMe, and say okay. Now, the host is gonna power off. When it does, I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna remove those two SAS disks, add in the NVMe uh, 512 gig, and then power back on. We'll pick up the video from there. All right, folks, the uh, host 103 is now done and rebooted. Um, so I went ahead, when it was powered off, I went ahead and I added in that uh, 512 gig uh, NVMe drive. Then I booted up the server. As you can see, like I said, it's fully booted here now. And initially when I went look at vCenter server here in the background, it would show non-responding. I just waited till it showed in maintenance mode uh, before I, uh, started working with it. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is, yes, it is in maintenance mode, but we're gonna to wanna to validate that uh, everything uh, is there that we think is there, <laughs> right? So first off, uh, the NVMe uh, controller, does it have that Sabernet 512 gig disk? And it does, there it is, Sabernet, and it's uh, 476 is what it comes out to. <laughs> 512, 476, you know, <laughs> how that works. All right, HVA 330, we need to validate our uh, two terabyte disks, and there they are, uh, 1.82 terabyte and 1.28 terabyte, it sees them great. Now, here's the, here's the trick. If I just take this host and I drag it into the cluster and try and get it to work, what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, hey, these two guys were previously with vSAN and they contain data, um, and let's try and fix it and get it working. Well, it doesn't work very well, okay? I'm not saying that vCenter server doesn't work really well. It doesn't work, work really well when you do the changes that I've made, okay? Uh, and in that case, we're totally replacing the flash cache. And when you do that, the caching tier, uh, you need to recreate the disk group. The best way to do that in this case is to come down to these guys here, okay? And we actually want to uh, erase their partitions. So once that's done, it clears off these disks and now when I enter them into vSAN, it's like it's the first time it's ever seen them because it has no vSAN metadata or data on it to uh, identify it. Now also, it's a good practice to do that with uh, new disks and we should probably do that with uh, this Sabernet. Even though it's brand new out of the box, I would assume there's no partitions on it, but let's just make sure we're gonna erase all partitions on it. Gone, okay. So they're all cleared off. We can confirm that here, everything's done ready to go. So now with uh, confirming we have the devices and we've cleared off their partitions, we're ready to drag this into the cluster. Okay, choose okay. And we can see down here, it's done. Now it's gonna take it a second or two. And this usually runs relatively quick, uh, less than you know 20 seconds or so as it goes through a couple updating of the vSAN configuration. But while it does, just for uh, information's sake, let's go over and look at the capacity and we can see, even though I've dragged that in and it's starting to uh, come online, right? It's done now. My capacity is still the same, right? In fact, it's saying, hey, warning, <laughs> right? Uh, not all hosts are contributing to your cluster. You might want to check that out, right? So let's get that fixed. And you can start to see errors are coming up. It's, it's normal, right? It's letting us know there's some things going on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we've got this host in maintenance mode, let's leave it there. We're gonna click on the cluster. We're gonna go to configure, right? We're gonna slide down to a disk management piece here. Okay, you can see that three is reporting this healthy. It's using zero of its three disks. That's what we gotta fix. So we'll click on this host. We'll say view disks, okay? We'll take a look. It says you can claim disks, right? So let's create a disk group. 
choose your brand new SaberNet drive, choose our two, uh, two terabyte disks, say create. It's gonna spin for a second. We can look at its tasks right here as it's adding these in. This will take probably less than a minute or two at the most to finish its job. Uh, once it's done, then we can go back and start looking at the capacity charts and seeing that it's increasing, right? That's kind of that's kind of the indicator that it's it's seen it. You know, vCenter server and the cl the vSAN cluster has seen it, and the capacity is starting to report in. Start to see that we've got those two capacity disks in this vSAN group, right? If we look at the cluster specs, we now see that all three, three of three are there. Now we need to take this host out of maintenance mode. Okay, it's gonna come out, okay? It kicked a little warning. Yeah, it's not complying with the host profile. We'll fix that later. No big deal right now, All right? Go up to the cluster, look at monitor, slide down <laughs> to capacity. And we're back up to our 10 terabyte again. Now, the last step here that we wanna do uh, we want to check out resyncing objects because here's what's going to happen. Uh, actually, this one kicked off, which is good. Okay, so it already kicked off and is starting to calculate all the objects it needs to uh, resync with uh, ESXi 103. Sometimes this doesn't auto kick off, and there's some buttons down here that allow you to manually start a resync, and you might want to do that. Uh, the last two. Uh, servers that I had probably took about seven, eight hours to finish the replicating of the objects. Uh, this one is only showing about 104 minutes, a little under two hours, uh, but I'm sure it'll grow as it goes through and it finds other objects it needs to do. But you should let this finish up. In fact, I should have mentioned that before you start any vSAN projects, like the one I just did, you should probably go into resyncing objects and make sure that nothing's going on. Now, if there is something going on, you go into a maintenance mode or something, it'll wait till that's done, but you should probably always, it's always a good best practice to come in here and check on resyncing objects and see if there's anything going on before you start uh, doing maintenance tasks. And folks, it's just that easy. So a uh, quick review, we powered down, put the host in maintenance mode, powered it down, stuck in that new disk, brought it back up, cleared the partitions, added it back into vSAN, and now all three hosts have the front end of that SaberNet 512 NVMe disk backed by the HBA330 with the two two terabyte uh, capacity disks. Folks, I do hope you enjoyed this uh, quick video on uh, working with uh, vSAN. If you have any questions, reach out to me or leave a comment below. And as always, please do hit subscribe. I most appreciate it. Take care.